All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining once again. Um, please welcome our host, Daniel Berzanu, who is our IPI planning co-chair, and he will be walking you through what we do in ITI. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. Welcome and thank you for attending. So th this is actually the first in a series of uh, IHE domain webinars, and today um, we'll update you on, on what the ITI infrastructure and ITI domain do, and also what's new this year. Or anyone that's interested in uh, attending the Connectathon. Or people that have heard about IHE but do not know much about it. So if you are a Connectathon veter veteran, this may not be ideal for you, but you're more than welcome to stay. Okay, so a little bit about me. Um, my name is Daniel Berzanu. I'm with uh, Ready Computing. I started going to Connectathon back in 2008, and I stopped in 2013, unfortunately. I'd love to go back, but I uh, just haven't had the opportunity. And I've been a member of ITI Infrastructure uh, technical and planning committee for uh, the past four years. I'm currently the ITI planning co-chair in my second term, so I've got one more year to go. And I'm also a current member of the ITI technical committee. All right, at a high level, here's what I'm gonna try to cover today. Um, the goal of this webinar is to give you enough information about the ITI domain and its profiles to get you excited about implementing them in your products or communities, and hopefully even getting you involved. Another goal is to connect you with people that can help you get started on preparation for Connectathon and participation in the IHE ITI community. So, rather than drawing you with technical details, we'll show you where to find more information and help you get connected to the right people and websites that can fill the gaps. So um, I'm hoping to exploit your curiosity and get you to join ITI's community and participate in Connectathons. So feel free to ask questions in the WebEx chat window as we go along, and we'll also um, let you ask questions at the end. Um, we use a lot of acronyms in, in our uh, IHE jargon, so if, if you're wondering about something, chances are so will others. So listen to the recording and, and please don't be shy. It's, um, it's a learning curve, but it's not super difficult. So, um, so this webinar covers ITI infrastructure domain, but IHE has lots of domains. Um, some of the main ones are patient care coordination, radiology, quality research, public health, um, PCD, and, and so on. Um, and there will be a webinar for each of those different domains. So the work product of any domain is the creation of integration profiles often called just profiles. Each domain, each domain's integration profiles are published in uh, what we call the technical frameworks. Those are, these are large PDF documents that have different volumes and, and explain exactly what these profiles do and how to do things. So our domain, ITI, owns a lot, a lot of the integration profiles. And, and here's a list of the categories. So document sharing, security and privacy, provider and patient identity services, REST-based exchanges, uh, workflow management, and we also have white papers that are uh, created in, in our committee. So unlike other domains which focus on one aspect of healthcare, um, ITI's profiles are, are used broadly. So, for instance, we pay attention to security and privacy no matter what area of healthcare we're focused on. Some ITI pro profiles serve as a general basis for other domain profiles. So, you could say 
ITI takes care of the back office stuff. Lots of our profiles are actually involve uh, sharing information between clinicians, facilities, and so forth. It's becoming increasingly important over time. You can see we have a lot of profiles dedicated to that sort of share. We don't have much time, but you can find more information on these items by reviewing these educational materials in, and the, the technical frameworks themselves. Um, the XD standard stands for cross-enterprise document sharing or whatever other extension. It started with XDS dot B, cross-enterprise document sharing within a community. XDS dot B is one of our most tested and implemented profiles. We then added profiles for each use case, like point-to-point -point exchange exchanges on physical media or point-to-point -point on a network, uh, which those you are familiar with, the direct project, we recognize as much of direct was based on the IHE XDR profile. We then expanded into sharing documents between established communities, like between HIEs, and then added use cases like subscribing to a document to see when it gets updated. There is lots of details represented here, and in any of these profiles match use cases you are interested in, start with volume one of the technical frameworks. So this is the enhancements we did to the XDS profiles, or the sharing profiles. And we've got some new enhancement this year. It's, it's called um, Remove Metadata and Documents. For those of you that are more familiar with the other ones, this is a new and exciting profile that um, allows us to actually remove documents. Um, we have a number of different patient, patient management profiles. So these cover use cases from patient administration through patient matching and querying. So some are available in the HL7v2 or v3 and now we've adopted also the Fire DSTU3 versions. You can, you can also see three profiles dealing with provider information down here. IHE security and privacy profiles cover the basic A's of privacy and security. So, authentication, authorization, access control, and audit. IHE's ATMA profile is one of the most implemented privacy and security profiles in the real world. We've also de <coughs> developed into basic patient privacy consents through the use of confidentiality codes at a high level. Um, we've also added, um, actually in 2000, 16 advanced patient privacy consent. Um, so various technologies are used for these profiles, including FHIR, REST, LDAP certificates, and, and so forth. REST has gained a lot of recent popularity with mobile devices. These profiles are in other categories, but are listed together here as they utilize REST, and in many cases, FHIR DSTU3 just been updated, actually. The IUA, um, RID, PIXM, which, by the way, I'm, I'm the primary author of PIXM, um, NACM, RESTful, Query for ATNA, which is a great addition for ATNA, MHD, which is the equivalent of um, XDS on FHIR, and PDQM, which is the patient demographic query for mobile using FHIR. We said earlier, some ITI profiles provide technical underpinnings that are customized by other IHE domains like patient coordination, AC, and quality research in public health, QRF. For example, RFD defines a general form-based exchange of data and the quality research and public health domain 
has defined profiles for exchange of custom forms of public health use cases, such as early hearing detection, family planning, drug safety, vital record death reporting, and more, all using RFD as a base. The XDW, Cross Enterprise Document Workflow Profile for Managing Clinical Workflows is based on the Human Task Standard, OASA standard. The Patient Care Coordination Domain has defined XDW-based workflows for e-referral and telehome monitoring. And Radiology Domain is defining an XDW-based profile for remote reading workflows. Again, all of these integration profiles are published in the ITI technical framework. If you've never read one before, there's a link here to some guidance on how to navigate them. This is a 10-minute webinar which helps you get to the information you need in the technical frameworks more efficiently. It's definitely recommended. In the year's work, we do a lot of testing, but we also develop a lot of new profiles to help respond to more needs in the healthcare industry. And I just want to give you a high overview of what we've developed in the past year or so and what we are uh, about to publish. So CSD, a mobile CSD, is mobile care services discovery profile, supports RESTful queries across the workflow-related care service resources. So organization are used as an umbrella entries. Locations are physical care delivery sites, such as hospitals, clinics, health outposts, physician offices, labs, and pharmacies. Locations also include political administrative units, such as a village, district, or region. The location has a unique identifier and may have geographic attributes, contract attributes, and attributes regarding its hours of operation. Each location may be related to at least one organization. So a location may have a parent-child relationship with another location. A practitioner is a health worker, such as defined by the WHO. A, practic a practitioner might be a physician, nurse, pharmacist, and so forth. And we also define healthcare services. And each healthcare service has a unique identifier, such as surgical services or primary care services. Another profile we're really excited about, it's very different from anything else we've created, is um, non-patient file sharing. This supplement defines how to enable sharing of non-patient files. Okay, mobile cross-enterprise document data element extraction is a profile that defines how to extract granular elements from data. Unlike our other documents, our other document-based profiles that extract document level, this helps us aggregate and extract smaller granularity level elements and re and remove the document aspect of it. Remove metadata and document RMD is new profile that helps us to remove documents, exactly what it says, and it's based on an existing um, transaction, which is metadata update. It's just an enhancement. We've also done a lot of updates to help the ever-growing FHIR um, community. Uh, we've included an appendix on HL7 FHIR, so all of our FHIR-based profiles leverage a common set of rules, and um, these are defined in an appendix. We've done a great upgrade to update to mobile access of health documents, MHD, uh, to utilize DST3, uh, as well as the same upgrade in PIXM, PDQM. Um, we've also introduced a little bit of a maturity level for resources for all the pro for all the profiles that leverage FHIR within IHE, so that you have 
right from the beginning an idea of how mature the resources that we're accessing are.